During the 1880s, Michigan produced about one-fourth of the nation's lumber, with pine being the most desired wood. Lumber camps spread throughout the state, capitalizing on the timber demand. Prosperity came to Lewiston because of the timber that was in this area, virgin pine. During the boom period, there was 150 men that worked in the mill, and then they had at least another 150 that worked out in the woods, cutting the logs, building the railroads, and putting the logs on the rails and bringing them to town. It was a very bustling and busy uh, town. The biggest reason for prosperity in Grand Marais back in the late 1800s was the lumbering industry. At one time, there was five mills in the Bay Area, which a lot of the lumber was shipped to Chicago to rebuild after the Chicago fire. And then town just grew. They couldn't find enough people to work in the lumber camps around the area. Uh, Sabo was rip-roaring wide western town when they found the vast wealth in the pine, the white pine. The towns just exploded. They became the boom towns and was all fired by the lumber. Along the main street, this is 1880s, 21 saloons, gambling houses, over 10 mills in the town, some of them running 24 hours a day. The logs were cut inland and then floated down to the mills here. The lumbering industry started waning in the 90s. The big fire in 1911 wiped the city of Osabal off the map. Overnight, Osabal was turned into a ghost town. In 1911, the lumber had all been depleted, so they decided to move on to another area and they literally took up the railroad tracks behind them. Tourism reinvented these towns. Grand Marais became a destination for hunting, fishing, just sightseeing. Asabo was taken up with tourism and vacation. This area really caught on as far as a recreational area and that was the next big boom that really brought Lewiston back. In Michigan Shadow Towns, Gene Scott chronicles these and other towns that faced similar booms and economic downturns, fading into a shadow of their former selves. I don't think of Asabal as a shadow town. The residents here are a hearty bunch. They've stayed here through thick and thin to where it's a community now. The people that stayed here after the mill closed really went through very enduring times. But those people, whatever it took, they stuck it out. We like it sleepy. We really like being a very small town, being a shadow town. Produced by Michigan Television in partnership with the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the Michigan Humanities Council.